Tonight, the parents of a nine-year-old speak out after he was shot in the face. They say he has since lost his eye. Police have two men in custody following a double homicide in Viewfort. And torrential rain leads to massive flooding in Denry. The details of these stories and more are coming up. This is the Hot 7 Nightly News with Lovelies and Amy Zerger. Good night. It is Tuesday, the 6th of October, 2020. Welcome to the Hot 7 TV Nightly News. I'm lovely St. Amy Joseph. Thank you for joining us. The mother of a nine-year-old who was shot in the face is speaking out about the incident. Nine-year-old Jan Henry of Cicero has lost an eye due to the shooting on Saturday. His mother, Renata Henry, says that the family's pain is compounded by the many rumors being circulated about her son's ordeal. Shaka Wooding begins our reporting. On Saturday, October 3rd, 2020, nine-year-old Jan Henry of Cicero Castries was shot in the eye by a family friend. The youngster was hospitalized immediately and underwent surgery at the OKEU hospital. There has been speculation regarding the boy's condition. However, as told by his mother, Renata Henry, the damage was irreversible and his eye had to be removed. She further disclosed that doctors were unsuccessful in removing the bullet, which remains lodged in the young boy's skull. My child with one eye and a bullet in his, his head, they cannot take it out. And people posting a whole heap of gibberish on, on, on Facebook and everywhere. They don't know what's going on, but they're posting things like they're mad. Nine. My child, nine, nine years. years. My child's birthday is the 14th nine of this month. And what's he getting? A bullet, a bullet in his head, head for his birthday gift. He don't deserve and that. He don't work for that. A whole heap of nonsense on Facebook. He don't work for that. A whole heap of nonsense on Facebook. What we see, rest in peace. Rest in peace. Yeah, rest in peace. Nonsense. Rest in peace. Circulating with the child. Why? Why they doing? Why people so heartless? I never seen my child picture for nobody out there. And people have my child picture of everyone on Facebook. That's why I seen. And sons and daughters are sending Rest in peace. Nonsense. Henry says, as if her pain was not unbearable enough. She has been alarmed to see a number of social media posts claiming that her son died. I'm not just an angry mother, I'm a hurting mother. To see my child inside of there right now, they have one eye and a bullet in his head, and I not hear nothing, nobody not saying nothing, nothing, nothing. Right now, they're even lost of words. So angry I am. I not hear from the police, and I hear from nobody, and all other news media is giving a whole heap of nonsense. I seen rest in peace on Facebook, all kind of things. Nobody not coming to me and asking me what's going on. People are supposed to know what they want about my child. A bunch of lies, a bunch of things that never happen. Right now, I frustrated and when I tell you I'm angry, you could hurt my voice, I'm an angry mother. As for the circumstances disclosed in a viral voice note, which alleged that the boy was shot accidentally by another youngster, or that it was a deal gone wrong over a motorcycle, the mother says this is far from the truth. I'm a friend mother too. That's all I can I say. I pray for my child. I pray for him. Heaven. He have to see life. He have to see life, he, he have to go to see life, but it's the people that do that to him. Huh. For God I, I live in it. For God I live in it. Let when God I tell him, I want them to see that today. For them to see how his mother hurts him. I didn't expect that from my child. Nine years, the child not even live. The child not see life, life yet. The child not see life yet to do my child that kind of thing. Me say. For his, you talk with your mouth, you talk with his mouth. And you want to hit, you want to hit him for his and mouth. You put, and you lie and say you were playing with the gun and the gun went off. And that's a lie. The irate mother says at this time her family should not be under such duress due to rumors. She calls on the public to allow her to focus on her son's recovery. Jacques Wooding, Hot 7 News. Now police confirmed that one man has been taken into custody in relation to the shooting of nine-year-old Jan Henry. However, his father worries that this may not be the end of the family's troubles. He spoke to Hot 7 TV anonymously and says the shooting has sparked rivalry between the families of the victim and the shooter and he fears for his family's safety. One individual has been taken into custody by the Royal St. Lucia Police Force in connection with the shooting, which caused the loss of nine-year-old Jan Henry's right eye. According to Superintendent of Police with Responsibility for Crime Management, George Nicholas, the Royal St. Lucia Police Force is confident that the right suspect has been apprehended. Police responded to an incident in Cicero, where a nine-year-old male victim received an apparent gunshot wound to the right eye. He was subsequently taken to the Owen King EU hospital where he underwent surgery and he is now in a stable condition. One male individual has been taken into custody 
and charges are expected to be laid shortly. Meanwhile, the victim's father has not found comfort in the news that the shooter has been apprehended. He says although he is trying to keep strong for his hospitalized son, he worries that there will be further retaliation from the shooter's family. Questions because at least the, the youth man do my, my the youth had do my, my son not his father even come forward and at least come and reason with me, you know. If man as man had have understanding, I would admire that, you know. At least if you come forward and at least come and make me know like how my youth stay. You're not even coming and see my son. So like your child is child and my son not nobody. You see me? My lady to tell you the truth, I just there, I just trying to be firm for the timer, but Almighty alone not know. My life still at risk because they do my son thing and like the way it is, like 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 it's just a magic thing, you know, people still RIP, like my son dead and all kind of thing. Like, you know, like all that just, like there is, there is so much in my head, like it's just like a bomb. A bomb are just there and I just trying to humble because at the end of the day is my son I really want to be there with, you know, I just want to be there for my son. ACP Nicholas further disclosed that investigations into the firearm used in the incident are inconclusive as no gun has been recovered. We do not have um, any information as to whether the firearm was licensed or not. What we can say is that the person who is who was taken into custody does not appear on our records as a licensed firearm holder. As disclosed by the superintendent, a court date has been set and the shooter remains in police custody as he awaits trial. Jaco Wooding, Hot 7 News. Benjamin Polio of Bellevue Viewfort and Harvey Estefan of Peru Viewfort are dead following a double homicide in Viewfort on Saturday. The Royal St. Lucia Police Force has made two arrests in relation to the case. The disclosure was made by the Superintendent of Police, George Nicholas, as he addressed the local press on Tuesday morning. A double homicide, which occurred in the early hours of Saturday, October 3rd, has left the community of Bruceville Viewfort shaken and in grief. Dead is Benjamin Polio of Bellevue Viewfort and Harvey Estefan of Piero Viewfort. Both men were shot on the promenade at Bruceville Viewfort in the wee hours of Saturday, October 3rd. Leading firefighter Stacey Joseph provided the details of the incident. The fire service received a call informing of a shooting incident at Bruceville in Viewfort. Arriving emergency personnel found two male individuals on the scene. One individual appeared to have penetrating wounds to his arm and abdomen. He was transferred to the ambulance where his wounds were treated. The patient was then transported to the St. Jude Hospital in a serious but stable condition where he was left in the care of medical practitioners. The other individual who was found was unresponsive with no vital signs and had obvious signs of death. He was left on the scene in the care of police officers. Estefan reportedly died at the scene of the crime after sustaining a gunshot wound to the head, whilst Polio succumbed to his injuries at the St. Jude Hospital, where both individuals were pronounced dead by a medical practitioner. As told by Superintendent of Police with Responsibility for Crime Management, George Nicholas, two individuals are currently in custody in connection to this incident. About 1.10 a.m. police in the south responded to a fatal shooting in Bruceville. And Benjamin Polion of Bellevue, Viewfort, and Harvey Estefan of Piro, Viewfort, were both pronounced dead at the St. Jude's Hospital. They were involved in an apparent altercation with unknown assailants. Two men have been taken into police custody but no charges have been laid as it relates to this incident. No charges have yet been laid in relation to this shooting. The Royal St. Lucia Police Force has recorded 37 homicides for 2020 so far. Jaco Wooding, Hot 7 News. We have some more police updates on decomposing bodies that were recently found, but first... Torrential rain led to massive flooding in Denry on Tuesday. The chairperson of the Denry South Disaster Preparedness Committee, Osbert Regis, has admitted that the incompleteness of a Denry drainage project, as well as ongoing works in the community, have lent a hand in the flooding of that coastal village.
The fishing village of Denry on Tuesday morning was, upon first glance, seemingly a disaster site after the community became heavily flooded following nearly two days of rainfall. Denry is no stranger to flooding. In fact, the village has become one of the top areas of concern to emergency agencies as the area is extremely flood prone. On Tuesday morning, chairperson for the Denry South Disaster Preparedness Committee, Osbert Rages, gave Hot 7 TV an update of the village's condition. As we speak, the water has receded. So the areas, most of the areas that were flooded, um, we have seen an improvement in that in that in that condition. But earlier this morning, um, as a result of overnight rains, we had um, certain sections of the the, the village flooded. Um, we had um, up in the towards the north northern part of the village, the Tualo area, the bridge, um, the river there, um, overflowed its banks and flooded certain parts of that area. That um, area, the flooding there receded quite quickly, but towards the south of the, of the, of the village, the southern end of the village around St. Peter's Lane, um, Victoria Street, High Street, we saw more significant flooding. Um, flooding which extended all the way to the Clendon Mason um, Secondary School. It took a while for the flooding to to go down, and um, several houses, several households were impacted as a result of that. But um, no evacuations, evacuations took place. Regis admitted that whilst efforts are being made to bring an end to the age-old problem, the time being taken to complete said works is proving to be problematic. He said, in addition, other projects currently being undertaken are adding to the problem. I know that there is a, a, a project, a um, uh, Denry um, drainage project, a master drainage plan. Um, I have been on, on other um, members of the community and other groups within the community have been part of the consultation leading to um, the finalization of that plan. Um, we are awaiting implementation of that plan um, to help address this issue. Um, coupled with that, we have um, currently the upgrades to the to the Denry playing field, where, um, among other things. The surface area for the field has um, been elevated to accommodate the new surface that they put in. Um, that has created a situation where the playing field is, in fact, um, at a higher elevation than the surrounding areas. As a result of that, this has created water displacement issues. Regis said as a result of past flooding, and with existing advisories and warning from the St. Lucia Met Office of a busier-than-usual hurricane season, the Denry residents are well prepared and sensitized for any adverse eventualities. He urged them to stay vigilant. My area of concern um, is we have more rain um, forecasted, so I just want persons to remain very, very vigilant and do not take anything for granted because given the, 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 the level of saturation we have seen on, in the ground, I would not like persons to take chances. If you believe that you are at risk, um, try to take the, 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 the um, first and foremost mitigation measures and if needs be to evacuate um, to a safe, safer area. Incidentally, today, October 6th, marks the 10th anniversary of a flood which devastated the village two weeks before the dreaded Hurricane Tomas. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Rochelle Gonzalez. Meanwhile, we have an update on the weather from the director of the St. Lucia Met Services, Andre Joye. We've had an upper level trough affecting the island from yesterday and it will continue to do so into this evening. An improvement is expected later tonight. The rainfall amounts across the island, Hironor Airport recorded 6.3 millimeters and George Charles Airport recorded 23.3 millimeters. It would seem that more rainfall was recorded over the Denry area because we had some flooding this morning. Also this morning, um, the flooding coincided with the 
the high tide, and this could have been a reason why the rivers could not flow into the sea and you had a backup of water. After the upper level trough passes, we expecting to have a tropical wave, which is located just east of St. Lucia, to bring some scattered showers from Thursday into Friday. So persons should continue to be vigilant um, take the necessary precautions if you live in, in low-lying areas. Um, the grounds are saturated now, and if we were to have more rainfall, it would cause flooding and landslides. So continue to listen to the weather reports and take the necessary precautions. That was the director of the St. Lucia Met Services, Andre Joye. You're watching the Hot 7 TV nightly news still to come. Updates on decomposing bodies found by police. The SLP says its national protest is just the beginning of its efforts to rally support against the UWP government. And the president of the St. Lucia Medical and Dental Association and the executive director of the Chamber of Commerce elaborate on opposition to the new COVID-19 Prevention and Control Act. That and more coming up after the break.